Hello my lovelies and welcome to another salami slapping episode of Techspert Weekly. The tech news show equivalent of tripping down the stairs and landing crotch first on a burning cactus. Now sorry for my absence the last couple of weeks, your uncle Spurt was feeling a wee bit knackered after quite a busy year so I've been off on a all-inclusive jolly to spin, hence a sizeable chunk of the past fortnight is a wee bit hazy. I mean basically there was a plane and then I found the bar and then some other stuff may have happened and then I was back on another plane and the top of my head was moderately scorched. But what a couple of weeks, the Spurton army is finally a million strong so a massive thanks to everyone who subscribed to this heap of bollocks to help us get there. I celebrated by smashing quite a few all-inclusive lagers as you may have gathered, although to be fair drinking on healthy amounts of booze is pretty much my standard way of passing time. If I wanted to do something a bit crazy, a bit different, I would have probably spent the night being teetotal. <sighs> anyway, enough banging on, let's get on with the Techspert Weeklies. Jingle me, maestro. Techspert Weekly. So even though absolutely everyone on earth must be sick to bloody death of us tech spots banging on about Samsung after its latest unpacked extravaganza and all the bendy phone goodness, there's still recently been a lot of online discourse about a potential Samsung Galaxy S23 fan edition that may be in the works and may be launching later in 2023. Now, a fan edition isn't guaranteed to happen, Samsung hasn't confirmed its existence yet and last year we didn't get a Galaxy S22 fan edition despite lots of reliable leaky people insisting that it was most definitely a thing that was happening. And frankly, if we can't even trust the internet then we might as well just do ourselves in. The last fan edition phone that Samsung actually launched was the Galaxy S21 FE and it was a proper cracker especially here in the UK because Samsung ripped out that wonky Exynos chipset that powered the original Galaxy S21 and replaced it with a proper good Snapdragon platform instead. Honestly, it was like somebody took Gavin and Stacey and then got an AI to replace James Corden with Samuel L. Jackson. Or you know what, even salad fingers or a sausage roll that's been dipped in dog shit. Whatever they choose, like instantly 500% better. And not only that, but the fan edition phones are cheaper too, so it's an absolute result. So based on past experiences and also recent web rumours, what can we expect from a Galaxy S23 fan edition? Well, the regular Galaxy S23 flagship already comes with an uber-powered Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 stuffed inside, so we won't see a repeat of that performance boost this year. And in an unexpected flip-reverse twist worthy of that M. Night Shimmy Melon fella, it sounds like the S23 FE will be powered by an Exynos chipset instead. In fact, rumours reckon that the Exynos 2200 that powered last year's Galaxy S22 will once again be the brains here. And if that's the case, we better see a serious price drop for the Fan Edition 2023, because that Exynos is undeniably underpowered and less efficient than the Snapdragon. In fact, even compared with the older Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, it is a disappointment, especially when it comes to draining that battery. So here's hoping that these most recent leaks are just a big old bucket of pig swill. That's right, I actually want the internet to lie to me now, what the f- But anyway, besides the processor, what will Samsung actually change for the S23 FE if it actually exists in the first place? Well, bugger all really, from the outside at least. OnLeaks has kindly done us some renders, although frankly he's not exactly had to stretch his imagination much. Unsurprisingly, this latest Samsung Mobile will probably look just like every other Sammy blower from recent memory. However, the fan editions do at least come in a jolly wee rainbow selection of colours to set them apart from the rest of the smartphone crowd. And just like those flagship phones, the S23 FE should be water resistant so you can get it as moist as you like. You can expect a 6.4 inch display which is bigger than the Galaxy S23, not quite as massive as the S23 Plus. And once again, it'll be slick, gorgeous AMOLED tech. Speculation suggests that the S23 Fan Edition will sport the same 50 meg camera sensor as the vanilla S23, which seems like a fair bet. You'll also get an ultra wide lens, but that telephoto lens will most likely be a less capable shooter to save a bit of cash. And rumours also point to a 4,500 mAh capacity battery, supporting not particularly nippy 25 watt wired charging, as well as 15 watt wireless charging. Although those just happen to be the exact same specs as the old S21 fan edition, so probably just a wild stab in the dark, who really knows. If a fan edition does happen for the S23, well you can probably expect it to launch at the arse end of the year, I'm talking sort of November, December time, so it doesn't clash with all of the googly, apple shenanigans that's going on. 
And as for how much it will cost, well, I'd certainly expect it to cost no more than about 500 quid if it really is old Exynos technology being stuffed inside of there, but we'll have to wait and see. And apparently there will be a 256 gig model as well as the base 128 gig, so it's your choice. Hopefully there'll be micro SD support, but I certainly wouldn't put any amount of money on that. So that's what we know so far about the Galaxy S23 FE, but it'd be great to hear what you guys think down in the comments below. Are you actually hoping that one of these things exists? Could you not give any less f**ks? And what would you want to see in an FE as well? Definitely let us know down below. And now it's time for the part of the show that doesn't have anything in its pocket. It's just very pleased to see you. It's fewer comments. Fewer comments. Oh. All right, so this week, let's commence battle with Solomon. You're right, Solomon. Hope all's good, sir. Says, how long do you reckon we have before this channel gets flagged and banned? Well, I've got to say, those demonetizations are coming faster than your mum and my nightly visits, so we've probably not got much longer now. But hey, at least we made the mill. So that's a nice, warm, cosy thought to keep me sedated every Thursday when I'm sat in the bloody job centre. Mr. Rainbow Loves Coffee, great name by the way, says every year I dive into the ocean with my fingers in my ears and sing la 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 la. I mean, you know, everyone needs a hobby. Mine is drinking, yours is a wee bit more mental. Fair play. CF542 says, have you tried just loading up your coffee in the morning with copious amounts of alcohol? That way you can get two things done at once. Oh yes, my friend, there is not a boozy coffee out there that I have not sampled at some point. You know, Irish, Scottish, Spanish, Mexican. It's a cheap way of traveling the world, if now else. I do love me a filthy espresso martini as well. I've got to say, that's fast becoming one of my cocktails of choice. Such a refined gentleman. I've actually got a proper thirst on now. Uh, Mike Troop says, snorting a nip of absinthe will sort you out. It did me some damage in the past. Not too surprising there. I mean, drinking the stuff is bad enough. If I actually snorted it, I'd probably just have a stroke. Although now you've got me wondering, actually, is there an absinthe coffee, I wonder? That's definitely worthy of a Google. And the answer, of course, is yes, there is, you massive idiot. First thing that pops up, the flying Frenchman, an absinthe espresso martini. Oh, filth. There's also one called the Death by Morning cocktail, which, yeah, doesn't try to sugarcoat that shit at all. Uh, next up, X says, X size says, Jesus, some people want to see a review, not a morning life is hard bollocks. <laughs> I fucking love YouTube, me. Uh, next up, Kellen Roder says, hey, what is your wrist circumference? It's quite a good chat up line. Oh, I see. And what size classic are you using in this video? So the last video I was wearing the Samsung Galaxy Watch 6 Classic 47 mil edition, basically the biggest one you could possibly get. As for my wrist circumference, I'd say roughly a jumbo sized sausage roll from Asda or a slightly squashed ham and cheese baguette from Upper Crust. Hope that helps. Our Music G says, man, what is up with tech companies getting rid of beloved features from their products only to put them back in the next generation? You know what, that is a bloody good point. There's definitely quite a few examples out there. The one that instantly springs to mind, of course, is OnePlus with the alert slider. And now Samsung with the smartwatch with the twisty bezel. There was no twisty bezel action last year, although technically they never actually took that feature out. They just only put it in the classic version of the smartwatch and there was no classic last year. But yeah, possibly some sort of crazy dominatrix style mind f***ery. No, you bad little doggy, no rotating bezel action for you. Beg for it, beg for it like the miserable mutt you are. <sighs> is it just me or is this show getting even kinkier every week? Whew. Uh, Bob Puznick says, you're a funny prick. Keep up the good work. Cheers from Australia. Cheers, Bob. Much appreciated, mate. Mythic Sun says, I think the first anime that I saw that got me really hooked on anime was either Metropolis or Naruto. By Metropolis, you mean the anime version of like the classic back in the day sci-fi film, right? Because I'm pretty sure I own that on DVD somewhere. I haven't seen it in like two, three decades, but I absolutely love the tits off that I did. Stone Cold Banger, I'll have to see if I can dig it out. Naughty Girl Style says, lol, my friend keeps trying to get me to watch Bleach, but I tried a long time ago and I couldn't get into it. I'm waiting for Spy X Family second season to start. 
Hells yes, couldn't agree more. Absolutely loved that show. And Chainsaw Man as well. And Bocky the Rock helped to get me through an absolute slog of a 2023. In fact, I couldn't actually wait any longer. So what I've done is I've just subscribed to Shonen Jump. You can get the app and you subscribe. It's like $2.99 a month or something like that. It's pretty cheap. And you can read as much manga as you basically want. So I've been smashing through more Spy X Family, more Chainsaw Man. And The Promised Neverland as well. I saw the first season of that anime. Then I heard the second season was absolute sh** but apparently it deviates quite significantly from the manga, so I'm going to try and go back and just read all of the mangas. There's like 104 volumes or something, or chapters maybe. Maybe it's chapters, not volumes, because that would be ridiculous. Just one more anime comment, and then that's it. No more anime, I promise. Uh, Trev's Web makes a great recommendation, Fist of the North Star. That's another absolute classic banger from back in the day. One of the first anime movies I ever saw that really got me into it. Again, it's basically just bloke punches another bloke. The other bloke explodes. Repeat. Everyone has a good time. And i got to say, I do kind of miss those days of like turning on Channel 4 at about half past two in the morning and just watching whatever random shit they serve up to you, which was generally crazy shit like that. Well, and just endlessly skimming through Netflix, like, no, that looks crap. No, that looks crap. Like, how do you discover new stuff these days? You know, I guess you just read reviews on the internet and watch reviews on the internet, which is, you know, yay, keep doing that, I guess. Anyway, bloody hell, stop banging on now. Um, Kido Masu says, I'm here again to ask for your wisdom. I'm holding an Oppo Find X3 Pro right now, and I'm looking for an upgrade. Do you think the Pixel 7 or 8 Pro will be a good improvement on the software experience, or should I consider the Find X6 Pro a decent upgrade? I mean, I haven't even sniffed an Oppo Find X6 Pro, so I honestly am not the best bloke to, uh, to ask on that front. Uh, but certainly I think the Find X3 Pro, probably the software support's starting to run out by now, so you might be swayed by a Pixel on that front. And I certainly dig the stock Android vibe. I prefer it to Color OS, even though Color OS is one of the nicer sort of Chinese launches. But I'd certainly say it's not a massive upgrade as far as the hardware is concerned. If I were you, as long as you're happy with your phone still, I'd just save your cash and just buy a shitload of beer and scampi fries. But hey, that's just me. I like beer and scampi fries. Anyway, I'm massively out of time, regrettably, but a massive, massive, huge, enormous thank you to everyone who commented last, not last week, the week, be not the week before either, the week before that. And sorry again for my absence, I'm going to be chained to my desk uh, for the foreseeable. It's going to be uh, going to be quite a few launches coming up with the likes of EFAs, etc. But let's not jump ahead of ourselves. We've got to see what's coming next week in the next week segment. Next week. This is about next week. So next week, I will be attending various briefings under embargo where I'll be getting hands on with some kit that's going to be launching out at EFA 2023 in Berlin, which is at the very end of August. And yes, I will be out in Berlin for EFA as well. And I'll be hopefully getting my sausage encrusted fingers all over some more tasty tech out there that I don't manage to get pre-briefed on. So that's all coming up shortly. If you're intrigued by the latest, shiniest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. A massive thank you again to everyone who previously commented. Please do smash your comments down below and we will respond to your queries and questions in a knowledgeable fashion in the forthcoming episode of Textbook Weekly. So have yourselves a bloody wonderful weekend, everybody. Cheers. Love.